What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scott Bear with Tori McElhaney and Chris Rim. And not only is this the next ed- edition of Falcons Final Whistle, it's a special edition of Falcons Final Whistle. We are coming to you live from Indianapolis, Indiana, where it's a balmy 35 degrees outside. Um, no, 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 that's, that's false. That's false. It's man, actually not that bad. It's, it's ready actually to news media off the top of the dock. <laughs> wow. Calling me on the carpet already. I was wearing a, a, a big jacket that I thought was necessary. Maybe I was factoring in uh, the wind chill, right? It's like a solid, like 50 degrees. I'm from San Diego. Okay. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm from Georgia. <laughs> Literally says 62 right now. Yeah. <laughs> The oh, real boy. the real field can't be 62, but it says it's 62. Y'all aren't gonna let me start this over, huh? Like we're just gonna let my uh Scott <laughs> oh, you gotta to keep going man and then in the next life hang out there for everyone. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, <laughs> off the rails in less than five minutes, we've set a new record for non sequiturs. Anyway, we are in Indianapolis, Indiana. The weather is up for debate in terms of its impact. <laughs> and, I feel like uh, it's not, but <laughs> okay. But, but <laughs> the bottom line is that we've spent most of our time indoors. That was going to be my segue until it was destroyed. Uh, spent most of our time indoors talking to Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot um, about the state of the Falcons as we head towards free agency and what they need to do. And um, obviously asked about some major players that are still on this roster and what needs to get set up because it's crazy. We're at the combine and people are focused on draft prospects, but they're going to start signing veterans in like very soon. March 16th yeah. is the uh, new league year. There's a lot of tasks that have yet to be completed for Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot. We're going to break down everything that those guys had to say moving f- forward throughout the uh, throughout the course of this podcast, before we get to some of the bigger topics that were discussed, there was also the issue of Matt Ryan and Calvin Ridley that's been routinely asked at every press availability since December every of Terry and Arthur. One. <laughs> right. About the status of Calvin Ridley and uh, Matt Ryan's long term future. It will surprise no one in this listening audience that. Terry and Arthur had no official update on Calvin Ridley, but also said that they understand the frustrations of why people want to know, but they can't discuss it at this time. And they, they promised to at a more appropriate um, uh, time. And then with Matt Ryan, we got pretty typical stuff. I think with some stronger and more colorful language, well, Arthur Smith said that basically that they anticipate having Matt Ryan on the team. So you could take that part of the quote. Or if you want to have fun on social media, you can take the other part of the quote, which is to say, we anticipate having him on the team unless we get an offer we can't refuse. So you pick your headline, right? Uh, so nonetheless, um, Chris, let's start with you. Uh, your impressions on the non-news with uh, Calvin Ridley, like what did you take from what you heard about Ridley and Matt Ryan? Yeah, I think they seemed like... I don't I don't want to exaggerate it, but I feel like they seemed a little bit more talkative than I expected in terms of Arthur Smith and, and Terry. Not to say that they were abnormal, like super abnormal, that they were saying a lot of things, but I, I just I didn't expect Arthur to say multiple times that if there's an offer, because he's never said that um to that he's been asked the question, but he's never said that. And you and I I think oftentimes I wonder. You know, these guys aren't I don't I don't want to think I'm smarter than these guys, but they both said things here where there was more media, national media, and they both said things that they've never said before while being asked questions that they've been asked before. So whether it was Arthur saying that comment and saying it twice where knowing that it was within a full quote and it was essentially what he's already said without saying it, but he said it explicitly. And then Terry saying we have four these these things in the room, elephants in the room that we'll get into and, and how we have four guys who are uh, who take up a lot of money, particularly our quarterback like that. He hasn't said that explicitly before. So I, that just stood out to me that that the things that they said and, and why they chose the same today. It was Sorry, interesting. Right. Yeah, I have my head raised, um, which is now something that I'm going to start doing every <laughs> single time I have something 
thing to say so that we're not like talking over each other because I tend to do that a lot I tend to interrupt interrupt I've been listening back on our pods and I'm like oh my gosh like I should just just let Scott and Chris talk my gosh (laughs) anywho um so something that I thought was really interesting about everything that Terry and Arthur said today was how little it actually had to do with the combine I think it's hilarious we were talking after they like after Terry and Arthur did their podium speak. And then they also came over and talked to local media. And it was just so funny to me how we were talking to them about free agency, salary cap, uh, re-signing potential free agents, all like what dominoes need to fall, like all this kind of stuff. Very, we talked very little about the combine. And I think that is so important to talk about because I think it's such a good example of where the Falcons organization is as a whole, that we are at the combine and we are talking about salary cap constraints, free agency. And I think it's really important. I think it goes to something that Scott I know is going to be working on is like how all of these things work collectively together. And one thing doesn't happen without something else. Like you, you have to have the money to sign your draft class. So you got to go and you got to restructure some contracts. If you want to resign this free agent, you got to do this. I mean, that to me, I thought was very evident in everything that Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot were talking about at the combine. Yeah. And um, just to address the Calvin Ridley thing specifically, because it's such a, a flashpoint topic around the league. There's been a couple national reports in the last seven days um, about it. Is the fact of the matter is, is it continues to be no update. Um, I think Terry, again, back to Chris's point that they knew they were in front of a national media audience with all eyes pointed towards them with every reporter covering the NFL and basically on planet earth. Um, They're in front of them. And, uh, you know, to really say, hey, we understand the frustration. We understand that, that, that people want answers that we can't give right now. And I think that that's a fair thing to say. And while we have to keep asking, and I think they appreciate the fact that we have to keep asking, it's their right to say, hey, man, um, we can't really go too far into this. The one thing that I would anticipate is that there needs to be some resolution at some point. And that's not just because there's 11 and an plus million dollars with this receiver or the fact that I think Calvin Ridley is an amazing talent go read Chris Rim's story about him as a route runner or him as a football player he's incredible um, and I think all those things factor into it and everybody wants to know where he's going to land and they're trying to interject and speculate and I think that's one thing we've done a good job of not doing right? Not trying to say why, you know, might he want a fresh start? Why are they saying this or that? And just kind of presenting, here's the situation. Here's why it's a huge deal. I think we understand it. We know you as fans want to know more. And this is just me talking here. I think that the Falcons and maybe Calvin need some resolution at some point. This is just me talking here, right? That at some point that, that, it's that it has to get kind of figured out. So the Falcons understand where their needs are, where their priorities are, how much money they have to spend moving forward. Um, and that will continue to be a major storyline um, until something is uh, decided and more, and, and there are finally news updates. So with all that being said, we're going to address a lot of kind of big picture stuff as Tori pointed out. Yeah. We're at the combine, not a lot of draft talk yet. So we're going to talk about what, Terry Fontenot uh, talked about what Chris alluded to, the elephants in the room, which is a lot of uh, big, heavy elephants with big, heavy cap numbers. Uh, So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about kind of free agency and the fact that the Falcons were making some sales pitches here at the Combine and also about what maybe they have to do, some hard choices and decisions to try to open up cap space and what kind of timeline that they have to uh, follow to get all those things done. But before we do that, a big thank you to our sponsor, Microsoft Windows 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, like this Falcons final whistle podcast learn all about the awesome new features of windows 11 at windows.com so let's get to the elephants in the room i thought it was very descriptive chris i thought you wrote a great story about what terry fontenot was referring to so i'll just put it out there uh, on a tee for you here um give give fans some background about what he was saying and kind of what he meant addressing those elephants yeah well he was pretty 
obvious in talking about the the four elephants. I mean, you could you could go and say they have maybe one more than four, but they're definitely four elephants. With you got four guys who are at least twenty million dollar cap hits this year, and Deion Jones, Jake Matthews, Grady Jarrett, and Matt Ryan. And he pointed out the biggest, the humongous elephant, the biggest elephant in the NFL, in in Matt Ryan. He he made him stand alone in terms of saying, you know particularly our, our quarterback. So it was it was Terry Fontenot, the general manager, who who mentioned that. And I think essentially what he was just saying was that, you know, we we know what the conversation is around our team. We know what fans are talking about. We understand what's going on. And what he also said was we want to have our cake and eat it too. So the Falcons could easily trade all four of those players and come out with uh, you know, looking good for the future, maybe with a lot of picks, uh, with a lot of space under the under the salary cap, the team could look completely different, but the Falcons wouldn't be competitive or at least as competitive as they could be with those players. So what Terry was essentially saying to me, and I think to everyone who, who heard it and maybe read the story, is that we're going to find ways to navigate this cap situation, to navigate our four elephants, however we do that. He mentioned either converting money, whether it's cutting people, whether it's making trades, um, specifically getting value on inexpensive one-year deals, free agents. And we'll get to that with a story that Tori wrote. But max <laughs> maximizing that, we're going to make sure that we're competitive and we are rebuilding for the future. So this summer, that looks like the Falcons not being big spenders on day one, not being big spenders in the early part of free agency. Similarly to last year, being patient, having that patience to say, we can't do that right now because we have to look towards the future and kind of work with what we have now, but we still want to compete. He said specifically, you know, we're not working to win another game next year. We're working to build a championship roster, a championship he didn't use the word culture, but championship roster. So a team that could compete long-term versus we went all in this summer and we got a big player, but it only translated into one win and it didn't move the needle much. So what I thought he said was, was seemed like pragmatic and it, it made sense in terms of how to look at the Falcons. And I thought it was kind of the, the most honest assessment we've got from him in, yes. in, in a while. I completely agree with that. And something that I have been looking up recently, you know, he's talking about the big, um, the, the four big elephants in the room. And um, I have been looking a lot at the salary cap and um, I don't have these numbers right in front of me. So don't like quote me on this, but just going off at the top of my head, if I'm remembering these numbers correctly, if you take Matt Ryan, Grady Jarrett, Jake Matthews, Deion Jones, and Calvin Ridley's cap hit in 2022, it's it makes up 127 million of the Falcons allotted 208 million that per the salary cap. So that I raise my hand gigantic. and say, wow. yes, yes, <laughs> yes, <Wow>. please. <laughs> back to you. Yes, back, back to you, Jory, in the studio. Um, I'm not in the studio. I'm at the hotel. Um, so that is a whopping number. And I think people have to be realistic about where the Falcons organization is at this point in time. And Chris, I'm glad that you brought up the free agency topic because that was something that I spent some time uh, just kind of diving into after we talked to Terry and Arthur. And I thought it was really interesting that Essentially, the Falcons are going to have to do what they did in 2021, which was sign these mid-level free agent veterans, um, and they're going to have to do it on cap-friendly deals. And so when you're talking about this and talking about having to do this again for the second year in a row in order to build upon it, in order to be in a better spot in 2023, I thought it was really interesting that Terry Fontenot goes on the podium and says, it, look at the Cordero Patterson example. This is the example of what we're trying to do in this off season. We're trying to find some value picks that kind of fall through the wayside of the, the first round, the first wave of free agency. And we want to go out and get them and we want to have a vision for them. And we want to be able to execute that, that vision, maybe in a way that other people think that they can't be executed. I mean, you, you look at, CP and what he did, I don't think anyone was going into the 2021 season thinking that 
that he was going to produce at the clip that he did from an offensive standpoint. So when you're thinking about this, the, the Falcons are like, look here. And this goes back to what Scott was saying about how Terry kind of went up there and had a sales pitch. He really was selling this organization to these mid-level free agent veterans that, that we're talking about. He, he goes up there and he says like, essentially, look what we did with Cordero Patterson. Look, look what our coaching staff did. Look, look at what the, the production was for a guy like CP who's in his twilight years of his career. And also he, th he throws a little sprinkle in, you know, who wouldn't want to live in Atlanta? You know, it's good for the singles. It's good for the married folk. Like, I mean, he addressed everybody. Everybody. He every, did. Every, no kids. He's bridging the gap. Yeah, he's bridging the gap. So he has this, this <laughs> whole pitch. And this is a pitch that, in, in Chris, this goes back to exactly what you're saying. Like, when you're at the combine and you have all of these people and all of these ears and, and every media person and every TV camera and all that kind of stuff, there's nothing that's said that's, that doesn't have a point. So the fact that Terry Fano wants to go up at the NFL combine and talk about free agency and how they want to find these value picks and how Atlanta is, quote, an attractive place to be. I think that is super important to the conversations that we're going to have in the coming months as the Falcons kind of tackle building this roster because they're not going to be able to do it with a, a big splash free agent signing. Terry Fano said that he was like, we're not going to, we're not going to be big players day one of free agency because they can't, they don't have the money to do that. So this is going to be a, a longer play as we saw last year. So it's going to be important. And I want everyone to remember this sales pitch because I, I would love to know when we get to the point where we're talking to these free agents that they're going to sign. If, they heard that and if that resonated with them yeah yeah I, I i hate to be like like a devil's advocate or kind of debbie downer in the room here right but so like cordero patterson kim like kim can be that guy and he was exceptional and the mvp and deserves a raise from what he got last year and we'll get it from the falcons or somewhere else how many free agents did the falcons sign right? And how many are examples of that? And the reason why I say that is not to just be like pessimistic, but it's hard. It's hard to find players at that level of their career to be able to uh, step in and give that type of production. That's not a gold standard. That's like, that's like stratospheric when it comes to the type of return that you can get from a free agent from this class, from that class of free agents, from second, third, especially third wave and, and beyond free agents. So I think for as much as the Terry Fontenot setting expectations for what the Falcons are going to do in free agency, he's trying to pitch the people that they can currently afford. I think that's important. I also think it's, under, it's important for, for fans to understand that it's difficult, right? It's also, I'm gonna go off on another tangent now. That's part A, part B is this. Um, going back to what Terry was saying about rebuild, to rebuild or not to rebuild, right? Like that's the Hamlet type question. And nonetheless, <laughs> when you get into it, right? Rebuild has been a four letter word around here since I arrived in July. He's Terry Fontenot said that it's disrespectful to the people in the room to rebuild, okay? I've also covered a, a team in the Raiders that took a scorched earth uh, mushroom cloud approach to their salary cap problems. They cut everybody, even if they were attached to the ship, they were just, they were getting rid of everybody. They were trading everybody. They didn't care about dead money hits. They didn't care about anything. They went four and 12 or three straight years, which they essentially did. That's fine for them, right? That was their approach. The, the full strip down. Um, Terry Fontenot and the Falcons are not going to do that. And I think that that's admirable. But to Chris's point, which was a really good one that I think fans don't think about enough, right? You want to be competitive, but you don't want to sacrifice your long-term vision to go from seven to eight wins, right? What does that do for you? You want to compete to, to have a chance to get to the playoffs and maybe things go differently this in the coming year than they went for the team last year. But you don't want to try to move heaven and earth for one victory, right? You don't want to try to do that. So at some point you look at, at the level of discipline that they're going to need to have, right? And they're going to have to be steadfast and they're resolved to not go chase one win, but to chase their, but to stay, stay with their long-term vision while not completely decimating the whole thing. 
Um, that's me talking for a very long time. Um, <laughs> I think so sorry I, about that. Yeah. No, I think I'd also say in terms of the, the free agents, maximizing free agents, the I think the Bengals are also an example of that in terms of yeah. They signed uh, Ricardo Allen and Eli Apple. And I mean, Trey Hendrickson was a, was a bigger deal and uh, Chidobe was a bigger deal, but um, they got they got value out of Eli Apple. He made a big play and I know he was kind of getting uh, the business on social media a little bit, but <laughs> he made a play in the, in the AFC championship. And um, th- those guys that they got on one year, one million dollar deals and things like that, they were crucial in getting them to the Super Bowl. So I think there's other teams also who you can see, like, also Trey Hendrickson was a big role, so I don't want to, you know, discredit him. And and they paid a more, a significant amount for him. But just saying how you can not necessarily break the bank ridiculously and still, you know, maybe maximize those players without hurting yourself in the long run. Um, So the question is, or the next part of it is they've got to free up some cap space period to do anything. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong from the Chris Rim story over the cap.com there's 7 million over. 7.3. 7.3 million over. So they've got to maneuver and do some things just to get to a point where they can be under the cap. Now what a lot of people don't realize you don't have to be under the cap until you have your final 53. Uh, but financially you've got to get under the cap. So you know what you're spending and you don't in- enter a, a, a black hole you can't get out of in the fall. But anyway, um, in order to open up some cap space, they've got some options and opportunities in front of them to try to do those things. Our good friend and fellow Falcons contributor, Steve Weish on NFL network was talking the other day about some possibilities that, we've all discussed, right? That you could extend Jake Matthews. You could extend Grady Jarrett. um, You could trade Calvin Ridley. You could redo Matt Ryan's deal, which Steve called a a code red option, I think was the term that he used. Um, But there are some ways to do those things. I let Arthur Smith and his conversation with local media, not the one on the podium that you'll see in videos everywhere, uh, was pretty candid about the fact that like it takes two to tangle, right? Like they can want to extend Jake Matthews. Well, they have to come up with the deal, right? Or they what they can want to trade somebody. They got to go find a trade partner for, for good compensation. They could only get rid of a person if they signed somebody else. There's so many variables here um, that, you know, that there just have to be a lot of contingency plans, right? Tori, that you were kind of talking about this earlier, that there's a lot of moving parts. There's not just one plan. They're going to execute, 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 and then sign people, right? Right. I mean, this is a very complicated thing. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. And I think it's <laughs> it's one of those things that it's uh, it's kind of like a um, where you you can. I don't know if you all used to play those video games. There was this like so I used to play these video games as like a Barbie like video game. And it was like if you made one move, then this was where you went. If you made another move, this was the car that you bought. Like and it was kind of like like build build your Barbie life or something like that. And <laughs> I, all, all of the men viewers or listeners just went, dear God, have her <laughs> shut up, please. Um, yeah. But no, I have a point to make. Um, and Barbie's going to help me do it. So <laughs> that is essentially, put that, that is pull, pull card immediately. <laughs> please, please do. That is essentially what the Falcons are having to do, right? Like if they, like, let's just use this as an example. And this is not me saying the Falcons are going to do this, but let's just use the linebackers room as an example. Let's say the Falcons restruct, or let's say the Falcons re-sign Foyer. Let's say they part ways with Dion. Let's say they go into the draft knowing that they're not going to have Dion and they need to draft a linebacker. All of that changes if they decide to keep Dion. All of that changes if they can't come to an agreement with Foyer. Like, uh, uh, there are so many things that dictate where the Falcons go in the draft, who the Falcons go after in free agency, who's a trade candidate. I mean, it it's really is like a piecing it together as you go to see what you have available. It's not as easy as saying like, oh, we're going to restructure Matt for the 500th time so that we can have the money to go out and get an edge rusher. It's not that simple, especially when you know that you don't want to like, like Scott, what you were saying, like there is another piece of this. It's not like this organization can just go restructure every guy 
or extend every guy or re-sign every guy at the clip that they want. There is an agent, there's a union, there's players that have a say in how much money they're going to make in 2022. It's not as easy. I think people have this huge misconception that it's just like, just restructure this guy to get under the cap. It is not that easy. You have to have a, a person who's willing to work with you in order to do that. So that's, that's my spiel brought to you and sponsored by Barbie. <laughs> oh God. We need, we need Barbie <laughs> on the line, man. They got to pay us for this. <laughs> I agree. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a complicated situation and it's complicated because they don't want to use the rebuild word, right? That, okay, you could just hack and slash and pile up dead money forever and cut, 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 right? That's the way that you have complete control over it and you can gain some space at a, at a huge cost, but then you're taking away your ability to be competitive. So it's a, it's a layer cake, man. Um, and, and I hope and I think that the Falcons fans that I engage with in the mailbag, maybe what you, you know, there's always extremists, but I feel like the, there's a core of Falcons fans out there that get it, right? Yes. That it is a complicated yeah. thing. And there's no way it's, it's non-linear um, in a way that m- makes the c- conversation around these topics kind of difficult. But I do think though, especially if Chris, I think really, set the tone for this podcast, but, but, but just by saying like, okay, like we need to analyze what they said at the podium, right. And what they said in that local media scrum. And then we got to like, understand like what their meaning by it is and what their intention with it is like all the free agent stuff around CP, just as Tori pointed out, that's okay. Like that's for the fans. That's also for everybody with like with it, within an expiring contract. Right. You know, um, so I just think that there are a lot of subtle nuances to it. Um, you know, again, who wouldn't want Grady Jarrett around long term, right? You can create some cap space there. I think the extensions, you think that's saying we want you, we're, we're willing to give you more money over a longer term with Matthews and with Jarrett. That seems to me to be the easiest road forward because it's a positive um, it's a net positive, but again, can they just get those things done? Right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure that anything, uh, is a given, uh, anything else about, you know, with free agency coming up guys, any other, uh, things you want to raise your hand about Tori? (laughs) It's about to be an exhausting, like, I know we're here for the, the combine and everything, and it's going to be an exhausting week. And then we're going to come back and we're going to have a week until the league year starts. And then it's just going to start right back over again. So I guess everybody just stick with us. Cause we're going to have a ton of content. I know today was just the first day of the combine and we wrote what, like five or six different stories that yeah. are all on the site. I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of, a lot of work, but hopefully you guys read it, enjoy it. Um, and let us know if there's any, again, if there's anything you want us to talk about, cause we have a ton of off season time to do these podcasts and we really like hearing from you guys. So, yeah. Definitely. I, yeah. <laughs> 100%. I will also say that I always hate it when people on the radio do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and that is that we have a really awesome content series coming up. Am I, I going to tell you what it's about? No. Am I gonna tell you what it is? No, I'm not. I'm going to leave that all hanging out there, but I've read it. Send your guesses it. into bear mail. Send your guesses. <laughs> bear mail. Could be not what it is. About baby cakes. It could be about children. <laughs> could be about, who knows? <laughs> could be about dating apps. Who knows? Just it send your guesses about, I, to Scott Bear. <laughs> it could be about whether baby cakes is going to hit free agency uh, <laughs> the answer to that question is no <laughs> no sir nope. no not gonna do it mr bear mail uh no no, no time person no nope, not not gonna happen uh so that one uh, that's a question that we can answer for certain um but anyway guys thank you so much uh for joining us on a podcast again recorded right here in in Indianapolis. Stay tuned to atlantafalcons.com for massive amounts of coverage as we move forward throughout the course of this week. We will, we're going to look at some draft prospects while we're here, talk to some draft prospects, how it relates to the Falcons. And again, uh, we got a lot of cool stuff coming up.
about the draft, about free agency. It's going to be a crazy couple of weeks and we're going to be right here at a lot of at atlantafalcons.com to take you all through it. I'm Scott, that's Tori and Chris. Talk to you all soon.